endless repetitions of bad, shameful, wrong, and bad some more. So no more of that for me. I'm going to talk about how it's great to be trans. Now this is not to say that nothing is hard. I've had hard times. We all have. We've all struggled. We've all second and third and eighth guessed ourselves and then finally come at great cost to a place of feeling confident in our identities only to have some other person start the interrogation all over again. We've all fought with our loved ones. We've waded through a mountain of paperwork that never does what it's supposed to do. We've all felt unsafe. We've all felt out of place. We've all felt frightened. We've all been felt up by a TSA agent at 7 o'clock in the morning at the airport. <laughs> <Been there. laughs> We've all handled misunderstandings and mispronouns and mistakes. We've all been laughed at. We've all been asked who we think we are. Who we think we are. You know, people say that like it's an accusation. Like it's a surefire way to make us cringe. It's a middle school bully accusation. And even when the bullies are the teacher or the principal, I think we know how that goes. Someone looks at you and says sneeringly, who do you think you are? But I'll tell you, trans people, we know who we think we are, right? That's the first great thing about trans folk. We have thought about who we are. We have thought about it a lot. We have thought about our genders and our bodies. But we've also thought about a lot of other things, haven't we? We examine every action, gesture, choice of work or hobby. We think about what we were in a bar and how we wear our scarves, sure. But we also think about how we want to be in the world. We forge a path. We have to, and it makes us thoughtful. It makes us all recognize that we do have a choice about most things. That we can define and then enact who we think we are. And this is valuable beyond measure. Many people grow up fitting more or less into their families of origin and the way they think about things and do things. And they're sort of away. Set the table dress for church, study at college, conduct relationships, and that way is the right way, because that's how they've always done it. That's how their parents and grandparents have done it. There's no need to question the rightness of it. But trans people, as we grow into ourselves and realize we're not going to follow through the door marked manhood or womanhood that someone is holding open for us, we also start to understand that a lot of those doors are optional. And we don't have to walk through. We can go around the racism or the sexism or the violence of our families of origin. We can make different choices about education, about work, about relationships, about religion. It's a great fallacy of the family that the progression is known and the options are limited. But trans folk, we don't get caught in that. We can't. We learn early there is no one true way. And that people who try to defend the one true way are just scared. And we learn that scared people can get mean quick. And we learn how to not be afraid of that or how to not show our fear. And also, how to find a new path, even when no one is holding the door open. And it's heavy, and we have to push hard against it, or find the secret knock, or the hidden latch. Trans folk will walk a path of who we are, even when it feels almost impossible. Because we do know who we think we are. And this is our strength. And while we're at it, most of us really want to be that person well. 
we want to be good people, we want to perform a gender or a sexuality that is kind and loving, and we think about how we speak to children and elders and people of other genders. We find our way to kindness and to courtesy. We find our way to respectful disagreement. And we already know how hard it is to be told that the thing we want and need most is wrong and bad. We know better than to do that to somebody else, and if we don't, we should. 